Hello, this is Rob Welch with For His Glory Ministries, continuing with you in our journey through Joshua. In our last message, we saw where the Israelites had failed, where there had been sin and there had been disobedience to God's word, and that there had been those things that had been devoted to destruction that had been taken. Uh, we find out uh, that it was by Achan, and he took things that he coveted them, that he longed for them, and that he ended up experiencing God's judgment. He and his family uh, experienced God's judgment, and they were destroyed. Thankfully, we live on the other side of the cross, and Jesus has taken all of our judgment for us. When Jesus went to the cross, he took all of your sin and all of mine. He took all of God's wrath, all of God's judgment. He paid for it once for all. I'm so grateful that we're this side, this side of the cross and the resurrection. But, but here the Israelites experienced uh, the judgment of God because there was, there was not a fear of the Lord on Achan's part. And some of the people didn't honor God as holy. And God had to purge that, that evil from among them before uh, they could fulfill what he had told them they would do in taking the land. And we're going to pick it up in chapter 8 of Joshua. Uh, the, Lord, uh, the Lord speaks to Joshua. That's where we're starting. And the Lord said to Joshua, do not fear and do not be dismayed. And I think these are very important words because here the Israelites had just seen God's judgment. They had seen uh, when they went to attack Ai, 36 men had been killed and the rest of the people fled. And Joshua was afraid when he went to the Lord because he said, look, the people of the land are going to see how we responded and that we were cowards. And they're going to come and they're going to attack us. And we're not going to be able to stand against them. And, and he appeals to the Lord. And the Lord revealed to him what the problem was. And he told them to, to consecrate themselves. And now the Lord is encouraging Joshua again. And sometimes we need that. When we experience failure, when we experience setback because of sin, because of idolatry in our own hearts, and we all have that, uh, there's there's a shame that, that comes with it and a fear often that comes with it. And, and we're wondering, God, are you still with me? And, and in the midst of this crisis and the fear that so many people have, I know many are wondering, God, where are you? Are you with us? Do you really care? And the Lord today uh, would say, do not fear and do not be dismayed. And as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, we have nothing to fear because Jesus has overcome the power of sin and death and judgment. Thank the Lord that we don't have to experience the judgment because Christ has taken the judgment. When he cried out, it is finished. It was completed. The debt was paid. All that we owed covered with the blood of Jesus and he rose victorious from the dead and he's alive and he's interceding at the right hand of God the Father and so so we we have that encouragement today and then the Lord continues here in Joshua take all the fighting men with you and arise and go up to Ai see I've given into your hand the king of Ai and his people and his city and so this time Joshua and the people listen. They take it very seriously. They didn't just send two or 3,000 men. They didn't go in their own strength. And I'd encourage you to read this chapter and read through Joshua. It's a, a great thing to do in these days. So you're not just getting just the highlights and the snapshot that I give you here, but really feed on the word and see what happens here. So Joshua and all the people, the fighting men arose to go up to Ai. And Joshua chose 30,000 mighty men of valor and sent them out by night. He commanded them, behold, you shall lie in ambush against the city behind it. Do not go very far from the city, but all of you remain ready. I and all the people who are with me will approach the city, and when they come out against us just as before, we shall flee before them. And they will come out after us until we have drawn them away from the city, for they will say they are fleeing from us just as before, so we will flee before them. Then you shall rise up from the ambush and seize the city, for the Lord your God will give it into your hand. And as soon as you have taken the city, 
you shall set the city on fire. You shall do according to the word of the Lord. See, I have commanded you. And then they went and then they did it. And they saw God's hand was with them. And this time, this time they listened and they did what the Lord said. You know, we have to be um, single-minded, not double-minded. If God tells us to do something, we need to believe him and not be afraid. We can't be operating in fear because of past failures. We can't be operating in fear because of past sin. Jesus has taken all of that. He's taken our sin. He's taken our shame. He's given us life. He's given us the Holy Spirit. So today, go out, forget the past, forget what lies behind you, and press on toward the goal of the upward calling of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Go out and share Christ. If you can't physically go and see someone, and I understand that in these days, call them on the phone, FaceTime them, Skype them, whatever, but talk with them, share the hope that you have in Christ, and look for ways to advance the kingdom today. Thank you. God bless you. Keep your eyes fixed on Jesus. This too will pass, but the word of the Lord our God endures forever, and the sons and the daughters of the kingdom must not retreat, but must advance and take the land God has given us. God bless you.